Now for our top story tonight, ABC News Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross, who recently won a Polk Award for his reporting on secret CIA prisons, done a number of stories about how the CIA does get information from terrorists. Mr. Ross joins us now. Okay, now I have to start with you use mostly anonymous sources on these stories, correct? In this case, yes. All right. Current and former CIA officers. And that's, you know... A little troubling. It's hard. It's hard to get behind a story, but sometimes you have to. Are you one hundred percent sure that what these anonymous sources told you is true? Yes, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. All right. And we I have believe, enough. We have enough sources. I believe you. I mean, uh, you've been around, and you're the best in the business. I think. Well, thank so you. I believe you. Now you say that the CIA broke fourteen top Al Qaeda leaders. 14, is that correct? They have 14 high-value leaders they have kept in secret prisons, and they have used these coercive techniques. They have a whole... On all 14? On all 14. Okay, this is Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Ramzi Bin al -Sheib, uh Zubeda, all of these guys. So all 14 were coerced, and the worst thing that they did to them, according to your report, was waterboarding. Right, that is the, uh, that is the most harshest of the treatments. And that's where a man is put upside down. They put a cellophane or a cloth over his mouth. They pour water. It gives the impression that the person is drowning. Now, some people liken it to a mock execution. It's very tough to withstand. When the CIA officers who are trained in these interrogations go through it themselves, some of them couldn't last more than 35, 40 seconds. Now, the waterboarding broke all of these guys? Not in every case. Some before even got to that point. But okay, some, some were, when they kept them up or they uh, played loud music or they kept them in a cold room? They start with a slap and then a slap on the chest and then the cold room, uh, sleep deprivation, which seems to be the most effective, but for some, the waterboarding is what it took. Okay, now, you say the guy who held out the longest was Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who is the alleged mastermind behind 9-11. That's How right. long did he last? About two and a half minutes, according to our CIA sources. Okay, do you know where they waterboarded him, where they were? I do not know where it was done. Okay, so he gave it up, and most of them gave it up within seconds of being waterboarded, correct? 20, 30 seconds is the most most people can take of this technique. It's that harsh. Can this hurt you if they continue to do it? Can it kill you, waterboarding? If they continued, it uh, could, but essentially it, it creates a gag reflex where you think you are about to die. You think you're drowning. You're not. Okay, so nobody got permanently injured doing this that you know of? Uh, permanently physically injured. Some would argue there's a mental damage. That oh, absolutely. It would last that this essentially is you feel you're about to die, and that has a certain effect. It's well, a mock execution. According to your report, Ramsey bin al uh, broke down and started sobbing. How did that happen? Uh, it, was, it was just too tough. Some of these, these guys are not that tough. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was very tough. They actually threatened to do something to his children, who were captured in the course of picking him up. And he reportedly said, that's okay, they'll see Allah sooner. All right. That all didn't right. move him. So in all 14 cases, coerced interrogation methods with being debated in the Senate right now were used, and in all 14 cases, according to your report, they gave it up. Now, the opposition, you just heard it, Human Rights Watch, ACLU, they say it's garbage. They, they told them what they wanted to hear. It wasn't truthful. Is that true? That has happened in some cases where the material that's been given has not been accurate, has been essentially to stop the torture. In the case of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the information was very valuable, particularly uh, names and addresses of people who were involved with al-Qaeda in this country and in Europe, and at one particular plot which would involve an airline attack on the tallest building in Los Angeles known as the Library Tower. Well, in fact, you say in your report that more than a dozen plots, a dozen al-Qaeda plots to kill people were stopped because of the information they got from coerced interrogation. That's what we're told by our sources. Do you That's believe right. that? I do believe that. Couldn't, couldn't they be misleading you? Couldn't they be, you know, for their points of view, because the CIA doesn't want the latitude, couldn't they be using you? Well, Bill, in some of these cases, people talk to us because they actually opposed the techniques. Oh, they, right? di they didn't like them. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, they recognized that they worked. The real problem at the CIA seems to be they want to have the legal authority to do it or not do it at all. These guys don't. Yeah, want they don't want to be in the shadow. They world. don't want to be in a grand jury. Sure, where they indicted. can be prosecuted. Yeah. And Point and Poindexter made that clear, and and uh, all the other guys made it clear that you know you can't put these guys in possible. But there are also some CIA officers who don't like it at all. All right, and now, they were our sources as well. You are probably outside of the agency and the military. The, the person who knows the most about what has happened to al-Qaeda in interrogation, because they have talked to you. There are some right. other reporters as well. Right, but you're up there. When you hear the human rights people come on this program and say, it doesn't work, it never works, this is, what do you say? 
I think it's an open debate because that sometimes there is information that doesn't hold up. Uh, but it's clear in several cases with Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, with people that absolutely beyond a doubt are terrorists, terrorist masterminds, it does seem to have an effect. And that's just the bottom line. Has it saved American lives? Uh, that's what the administration would say. Certainly, if you interrupt a tower, uh, a plot to bomb a tower in Los Angeles, you've saved lives. Would you, and I know you don't want to give the opinion, you're a hard news reporter, but if you were reporting this story on O'Reilly's position versus the Human Rights Watch, and we're going to have the Human Rights Watch come right, right. right up behind, would you say O'Reilly is right? You're not going to get that from me. I, I'm not going to say who's right or who's wrong. Right. Would you say that the argument that I'm putting forth has, is fallacious? The argument, at least to one or two people I know as a fact, is not fallacious at okay. all. Okay. So what we're reporting, that this kind of interrogation has worked and has thwarted al-Qaeda plots, is true. That is true. It has worked. It has thwarted plots. Okay. And then when you hear somebody say it never works, that's false. Never is a very powerful word. I that's think, false. I don't think that's the case. Okay. Good. I think I got it out of him. Did I get it out of him, everybody? <laughs> Now remember, you know, because I, I want to be, I want to be an honest broker of information. Ross, I was going to say that Ross cannot give an opinion and continue to investigate stuff on this level, and and we understand that. But I just want to make it crystal clear what we have said is true, and what the opposition has said, overstating it, I believe. It's false in some regard. But we'll have Human Rights Watch. We've been listening to this whole thing. They're going to come in and we're going to respond. Brian, always good to see you. Congratulations on the poke. Thank you very much. Okay.